Hey guys, it's the Med Studio and today we'll be looking at heart murmurs and how to best remember them for exams. So this video will cover the most common murmurs, but it's not an exhaustive list. So what are murmurs? A heart murmur is a sound created by the turbulent blood flow in the heart and they can be heard using a stethoscope in a cardiovascular exam. The heart courses beats due to a series of events that's known as a cardiac cycle. Within this cycle, the heart contracts and relaxes. Contraction is known as systole and relaxation is known as diastole. Normal heart sounds are made up due to the valves closing in these cycles. The four valves of the heart are aortic, pulmonary, mitral and tricuspid valves. There are two main normal heart sounds that you should be aware of. The first one is known as S1. This is due to the closure of the mitral and tricuspid valves, which marks the start of ventricular systole. Similarly, the second sound is due to the closure of aortic and pulmonary valves. This marks the end of ventricular systole and the start of diastole. So, murmurs are caused due to the abnormal functioning of these valves. And we can use the mnemonic PASS PAID in order to remember the features of these common murmurs. Additionally, the two main phrases to remember are stenosis and regurgitation. Stenosis is when there is a narrowing of the vessel, whereas a regurgitation is when there is a backflow of blood as the valves cannot close properly. So let's start off with aortic stenosis. So stenosis means that there is a narrowing of the valves. So there are several causes for this, for example, calcification, rheumatic heart disease, which makes the valve thick and difficult to function. So what are the features of this murmur? This murmur can be described as an ejection systolic murmur, which is best heard on the aortic region of the chest. As this valve pushes blood to the rest of the body, the abnormal sounds can also radiate to the carotids. Here you can remember that AS is an ejection systolic murmur, as opposed to any other type of systolic murmur. So here you can remember that aortic stenosis is an ejection systolic murmur as opposed to any other type of systolic murmur because the aorta is the main vessel which is directly pumping blood and ejecting blood to the rest of the body. We can use the mnemonic PASS in order to remember this which stands for pulmonary slash aortic stenosis can equal to systolic. This type of murmur has a crescendo decrescendo type of sound meaning that it gradually increases in the sound and then decreases in the sound's volume, hence creating kind of a diamond shape in a phenogram. The clinical features of this murmur can be remembered using the mnemonic SAD, which stands for syncope, angina and dyspnea. Aortic regurgitation is when there is a backflow of blood from the aorta back into the left ventricle. So we previously used the mnemonic PASS for aortic stenosis. Now we'll be using the second part of the mnemonic for this. PAID stands for pulmonary slash aortic insufficiency equals to diastolic. The causes include factors which will damage the valve, such as infective endocarditis, 
rheumatic heart disease and in some genetic conditions people can also have a bicuspid aortic valve such as those with Turner syndrome. In terms of the clinical features, this murmur can cause a collapsing pulse, meaning that it, the pulse is initially bounding and then reduces in power. Mitral stenosis is the narrowing of the mitral valve, causing reduced filling of the left ventricles. It's known as a mid-diastolic murmur. Previously, we used a mnemonic pass paid for the aortic and pulmonary murmurs. For the tricuspid and mitral valves, we just use the opposite of this. So, tricuspid and mitral stenosis can cause a diastolic murmur instead of a systolic murmur, like mentioned earlier with aortic and pulmonary stenosis. Similarly, tricuspid and mitral regurgitation can cause a systolic murmur, unlike aortic and pulmonary regurgitation. The thickening of these valves can create an opening snap type of sound. So the clinical features of mitral stenosis means that it can cause a malar flush. This is a plum red discoloration of the cheeks as there is a restricted opening of the mitral valve. This is due to the low cardiac output which leads to the cutaneous vasodilation. Similar to aortic regurgitation, mitral regurgitation is when there is a backflow of blood from the left ventricle back into the left atria during ventricle systole. So this is when the ventricles are contracting. Therefore, mitral regurgitation is also known as a pan-systolic murmur meaning that it occurs throughout systole. Once again, we can use the opposite of the mnemonic pass paid in order to remember this. So we know that aortic and pulmonary regurgitation causes a diastolic murmur. So a mitral regurgitation is a systolic murmur because this occurs continuously throughout when the ventricles are contracting. Hence, the pan-systolic murmur specifically. Finally, tricuspid regurgitation is also another important murmur to remember. Again, this is due to the backflow of blood in the tricuspid arteries. If we use the opposite of the past paid mnemonic, we'll realise that this is similar to mitral regurgitation, because tricuspid regurgitation is also a pan-systolic murmur. Tricuspid regurgitation is often associated with infective endocarditis, specifically those who are IV drug users. This is because the tricuspid valve is the first valve that comes into contact with the blood that's been injected with the illicit drugs. Therefore, pathogens like Staphylococcus aureus can colonate on this valve, resulting in infective endocarditis. A good way to remember this is by associating the phrase, do you want to try some drugs, with tricuspid regurgitation. Emphasis on the tri that's spelt as T-R-I. I just wanted to take this opportunity to give a huge shout out to placement notes. As a medical student, it's essential to carry a notebook and pen around whilst teaching sessions and also talking to patients. But it can be quite difficult to take notes during a consultation. And even if you do take notes, it can be quite messy and difficult to reference in the future. However, placement notes has made it much, much easier for us by going that extra mile and providing a general template for us. This ensures that you don't miss out any key details and helps us to visualise the structure of a good history. Not only that, they come in a good size that is not too small or not too big. Personally, I've been able to carry these notebooks in my scrubs. They also have a great variety of designs and colours, yet still maintaining a very, very professional look. 
So do definitely check them out on Amazon for an affordable price. And that brings us to the end of this video. Hope you guys found it really useful. Please remember to like, subscribe and comment below. And follow me on Instagram at the Medstudier.